Hi, I'm Alex Yon. I'm going into final year of molecular biology and I'm working in Dr John Christodoulou's lab uh, in the Darwin building. It's a world leading research lab looking at proteins as they emerge from the ribosome, looking at the, the folding and misfolding of the proteins. And that is the aim of my project. I'm studying, looking at how two proteins uh, interact with the ribosome as they emerge while they're being translated and also how they can acquire misfolding. I was most interested by the NMR side of it. So for me, analytical techniques and sort of structural biology techniques are, are something that I wanted to learn more about. So the proteins that we're looking at in the lab, uh, they, if they misfold off the ribosome, they can become aggregation prone. So they stick together to form fibril structures and these can be deposited in neurons of uh, people with neurodegenerative diseases and they can be neurotoxic. So from a point of view of therapeutic strategies, if we can understand how this misfolding occurs, which is where the NMR, uh, the sort of structure and dynamics come in, uh, and almost in, in real time, then we can look to develop ways of preventing this misfolding. And if you can understand it better, you can develop the therapeutics to prevent the, the fibrils from forming in these diseases. These um, deposits are implicated in diseases like Parkinson's and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or Lou Gehrig's disease. So in order to look at the, the proteins when they're bound to the ribosome, to look at how they're emerging during translation, you have to transform, or, or in other words, uh, manipulate cells to produce the protein that you, you desire. Once you've transformed these cells, you have to work out the optimum conditions and the uh, variable here being time is what I was working on today. So the, the optimum conditions for the expression or production of your uh, ribosomes with your protein. Okay, so this is the overnight culture from the, so I, I transformed the cells and then cultured them overnight and this is what I've taken out of the incubator. In order to assess the level of growth overnight, I'm taking a, an optical density measurement using a, a, a light spectrometer um, and that will give me a rough idea of the concentration of cells. Here, this is the spectrophotometer, um, where I'm going to measure the, the optical densities. I'm being careful to put a blank in, that's just uh, water here, and that gives a sort of baseline reading, making sure that the translucent side is in the right place for the measurement. So the overnight culture has to go into a large centrifuge to spin it down to create a, a cell pellet at the bottom and that's sort of the, the, the cell mass that moves towards the, the bottom of the tube because of its, uh, its relative mass towards the rest of the mixture and that's what I want so I have to run that in a centrifuge. Also taking care to balance it with the second tube full of the equivalent weight of water. So this is spinning for 20 minutes at 3,500 RPM and it's good to check that the speed is increasing uh, to about 1,000 RPM before walking away. The cell pellet from the centrifuge needs to be resuspended in a, a different media. So the initial media was rich in nutrients to encourage cell growth uh, to get the maximal amount of uh, ribosomes, but now we're switching to a a minimal media with, a, with it's less rich in nutrients. So this enables us, if we were to run NMR uh, on these samples, this point with the minimal media, so it, it means that we can add in an isotope and this means this is necessary for the NMR, so uh, nitrogen 15 or carbon 13. So the cell pellet then needs to be resuspended uh, and to do that I'm just taking off about 50 mil of, uh, of the media. I'm just going to prepare that up and down over the cell pellet to resolubilize it. Now you have to be quite careful with resuspension. Um, obviously shaking too vigorously uh, could disrupt the integrity of the cell and that's, that would obviously be very detrimental to the experiment. Now the cells have been resuspended, I'm just pouring it back into the media and that's ready to be induced to start the expression test. Uh, just taking a stock there about uh, a mil just to run another optical density experiment just again to assess the, the growth. Now I'm adding IPTG to the, the mixture 
that will chemically act on the DNA sequence that we put into the cells and that induces it to start producing the, the DNA that we want and that then will lead to transcription and then translation so we can hope to isolate the ribosomes with the protein as it's translated. So one of the time points that we're interested in is what the expression profile is like zero seconds after induction. So pretty much straight away taking 100 mil of that off and, and I'm going to spin that down and um, run again an OD experiment and that will become the, the zero time point. The remaining mixture will be separated out into four larger flasks which will be incubated and then at specific time points I will again repeat what I do with the zero minute uh, sample and that's to freeze them off once they've been spun down and then they will be compared via a, a western blot later to look at the expression. Here I'm adding rifampicin, uh, an antibiotic, into each of the separated flasks before incubation and this just helps in the selection process. So those cells that haven't taken up the DNA for our protein will not also have the resistance for rifampicin, so this, they, they will be destroyed. So it selects for the desired cells. The zero minute time point is spinning for 15 minutes in a centrifuge, so while that's happening I'm treating the 20 minute time point in the same way, so that's come out of the incubator at the correct time. I'm now pipetting it into Falcons to be spun down again in the same way as the zero minute. So that's just the sort of getting across that it's the, the, the five time points, um, so I'm repeating the process for five, five different time points. The zero time point has come out of the centrifuge, I've spun it down. I've just discarded the supernatant and I'm going to then just freeze the, snap freeze the cell pellet in, a, in liquid nitrogen. Once these cell pellets have been frozen in the liquid nitrogen, they need to go in a freezer to be stored and then defrosted for the next purification step. Uh, there's something really kind of rewarding about putting something on and, and leaving it overnight to spin down or something and then in the morning coming back, doing a test on it and finding out that it's, it's what you want it to be. And, uh, and then you can go from there. So just scanning my card, walking into the lab and then scanning out at the end of the day thinking I, I got something done today is for me that I, I'm really enjoying that.